Word of God with us. Amen. Does it look lovely? You have your thing on? You have your mic on? Or are you going to use this? Yeah, I'm going to oh. use that. Right. Yeah, I, I had no place to put the mic, so. Yeah. So here I am. All right. Well, Lord, we come before you and we thank you so much for um, your goodness, your wisdom. I ask, Lord God, that the words that I speak, they would not be my own, but Lord, they would be under the power and unction of Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit, you speak and you direct and guide each one of our hearts into the greater dimension of your truth, helping us to trust you, to believe you for greater and bigger things, for our lives, for our nations, and for this world. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. So we've been talking about Psalm 91. And, you know, understanding, just a quick recap, is, you know, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord. And it's so important what we're saying of the Lord. Because we can say a whole bunch of negative wrong things, but according to the Word of God, it tells us that we will be judged for every idle word that we speak. So it's a big deal with God. And in my opinion, if it's a big deal with God, it's big, it should be a big deal with me. So in Psalm 91, it starts to tell us some things that we should be speaking, that we need to be speaking. He's, he is my shield. He's my protector. He guards me. And then it tells me not to be afraid of some things. And twice in this Psalm, it tells us not to be afraid of the pestilence. And that pestilence is a deadly epidemic. That's what it means. So if we're not supposed to be afraid, what a, what a word in season. You know, that we're not to fear these types of things. Amen? So, you know, understanding that throughout Psalm 91, if we want the benefits of it, we have to take those two first verses and really choose to agree with God. You know, abiding in the shadow of the Most High. How do we do that? We do that by just agreeing with what God has to say, by getting God's heartbeat and trusting Him in every area of our lives. And I want to go to um, Isaiah 35, because in Isaiah 35, and I want to start with verse 8, it tells us about a road, a highway, okay? And it says, a highway shall be there and a road. And it shall be called the highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for others. Whoever walks the road, although a fool. I'll just give you a moment to pause and think about that. Because that grabbed me. Because sometimes I can, I can do foolish things. I can choose to not necessarily do the right thing. But it's telling me in this passage that although a fool shall not go astray. You know, even when I do sometimes not always choose the right way, if I'll trust God in the integrity of my heart, he'll keep me on the right path. And understanding, remind me, remind me to go to Abimelech, okay? Okay. Sarah and Abraham, I'll finish this and then we'll go back to it because I want to I wanna talk about, well, let's go there now. Let's go ahead and take that down for a second. But in, in Genesis, there's a time that Sarah and Abraham, they go into a foreign land and Abraham says to Sarah, Sarah, tell them that you're my sister because you're beautiful, They're, they'll kill me to get you. And she's like, okay, which it wasn't a complete lie. We don't do this now. But then um, they did have the same father, okay? So they actually were brother and sister, so we don't do that anymore. But um, that's, that's what it was then. And anyway, in the midst of it, the king sees Sarah and takes her as his wife. Well, that night, um, God speaks to Abimelech in a dream and tells him, you know what, you, you're busted. Well, I'm paraphrasing. You're, you're busted because you have taken another man's wife. And King Abimelech is like, but, but Lord, I did it in the integrity of my heart. And the Lord says, I know that you have. So now return his wife to him and you'll live. 
So, you know, understand that even when we make choices, and sometimes they may not be the best choices, when we keep the integrity of our heart focused on God, God is a restoring God. God is a redeeming God. Okay? So we always want, we never want to get to a place where we think in regret all the time with our past and, you know, those types of things. God is so much bigger than our past. God is so much bigger than our biggest mistakes. And I can remember years ago when he told me that, I was so afraid to, to talk in front of anybody. I was so afraid, especially to share the word, because I was so afraid, what if I make a mistake? What if I say something wrong? And I don't want to misrepresent you, God. And I was just paralyzed with fear. I know you all are thinking, maybe you need a little more of that. But <laughs> no, I don't in Jesus' name. But um, understand that whenever we're paralyzed and we're so afraid of making a mistake, we start, we get the wrong thought. We think we're the ones doing it. And we're not the ones doing it. We're trusting God to do it. Amen? So anyway, I was afraid. And finally, uh, I shared something with somebody. And I mean, I was up the entire night thinking, I mean, just picking it apart. Like, oh, what if they took it this way? What if I said that wrong? Oh, I probably shouldn't have said it that way. And I mean, I was just tormenting myself. And, and the Lord just in a real still, small voice spoke to my heart. And he said, you know, I'm bigger than your biggest mistakes. Just trust me with it. And I'm like, okay, Lord. And he really dealt with my heart that if my heart is to do the right thing, and I study the word, and trust me, as long as we're on this earth and we're studying this word, there will be new revelations being revealed to us. Because if we think that we can just read this word and boom, get it all, oh, God is so much bigger. Amen. I, every time, and, and you know what I'm talking about. You can read the same scripture a hundred times, and the hundred and fifth time, all of a sudden, you're like, I never saw that before. Because the Word of God is a spiritual book, and the Holy Spirit leads us into the truth of it. So we just get to keep learning. Amen? I, I don't know about you. I think that's fun. I think that's pretty awesome. So where was I going with that? Oh, Abimelech, Sarah, and Abraham, and the integrity, staying in the integrity of the heart of God, all right? Let's go back to, um, to finish this up. Shall not go astray. Even though a fool shall not go astray, no lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast go up on it. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. Who's the redeemed? Woo! Yes, we are. Who has redeemed us? Jesus. And we've made the choice. We've received him as our Lord and Savior. And we are the redeemed of the Lord. And we say so. Amen? Woo! There's another place to say it. How did we get saved? Do you remember? Do you remember how we got saved? What's the Word of God tell us? We believed in our heart and we confessed with our mouth. I'm telling you, what we say is a big deal. It's a big deal. All right, ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing with everlasting joy in their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Woo! Sorrow and sadness are enemies. Grief is an enemy to the joy of the Lord, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen? All the time. And then <clears throat> Matthew 7, starting with verse 13. And I'm going to talk about two paths, two roads, or, or representing our lives and the things that we choose. And every situation that we face, we have a choice which road we're going to take. Are we going to take the high road where the blessings of God flow? Or are we going to take the low road where it leads to destruction? Okay? So in Matthew 7, verse 13, it says, Enter by the narrow gate, 
For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. See, the wide gate, it's always easier. I don't know why, but it is. Okay? Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few that find it. Because the only way is through Jesus Christ. He is the way, he is the truth, he is the life, he is the everything. Amen? And we can't do it by our works. We can't do it by, you know, trying to do it. We do it by receiving the goodness of Almighty God. Amen? All right. I said I'm going to do a drawing. I am not an artist. You will see that. Can you all see over here, or do I need to tell it something? Okay. All right, so here we are. Happy people, praising the Lord. Woohoo! That's us, okay? And we've got two roads. So it, it, from the scripture, it tells me to enter this road, it starts off pretty narrow. Okay? So we got a real narrow road here. Okay? But this road, if we so choose to accept it, will always lead us to a place of life, Okay, and abundance. All right, and then we have a road here. Now it tells me this road starts off really wide. Okay, it's easy. I'm doing it downhill because downhill is always easier. Okay, and but it, it comes to a place that's very narrow. Okay, and it tells us where this road leads to. It leads to destruction. Okay, so this is a no brainer. Even though this road is an easier road to get into, who wants to end up there? I don't. Amen. So we want to make sure that we're, we're heading in the right direction. All right, so this road, let's say that this road is a road of faith. Simply, faith is trusting and believing that God will do what God said he would do in his work. All right? It's also, it takes diligence. All right? This is a road that you have to stay consistent with it. All right? In, in the word of God, it tells us, show me your faith. I, one will say, I have faith, and the other one will say, I have works. I'll say, Show me your faith by your works. Now, we don't get into the kingdom of God by works, okay? Get into the kingdom of God one way. Who's that? Jesus. Because we choose to believe, we choose to trust in him. Amen? All right, and the other thing here is consistency. I'm writing really small, but okay. So we've got faith, diligence, and consistency here. All right? Then, down here, this road... This, we'll call this road the road to flesh, okay? It's the road of the flesh. It's what makes us feel good. It's what's easy. Um, we're led by more of our feelings, how somebody makes me feel, um, whether I like it or not. Um, it's, it's all me deciding, self-absorbed, okay? So we're self-absorbed. In, it's all about me, and it's all about what I'm going through. And you don't understand, and you never will. You know what? Nobody can ever understand anybody else. But I will promise you one thing. God knows exactly what you're going through, and he understands. And he has made a way where there seems to be no way. He has made even the desert to bloom. He's made a water, watering place where everything looks dead. And he brings it to life because that's who our God is. Amen? All righty. So in this, we, you know, we're constantly being challenged here. We're challenged to grow. All right. So always growing. We're, we're always, always, always going to be challenged to grow. Never get to a place, that's, I love, I love Betty and some of our seniors here. I mean, they're not done. They know. They, they know they haven't arrived. 
I'm thinking, hey, if you haven't arrived, I've still got lots to learn, huh? <laughs> so, you know, we want to keep, keep moving forward. It, it's a place where we continually have to choose to keep learning, okay? Keep maturing. So, you know, we want to continually stay in an attitude of being teachable, okay? We never want to get to the place where, yeah, I heard that before. Yeah, I know that. Can I tell you when I know people really get the Word of God? Is when you share the same scripture, and every single time they're like, yeah, that's right. That's it. You know why? Because you know it's the truth. You know, when somebody comes up and says, oh, you know what? God is the God that heals you. Yes, he is. Praise God. Yeah. Why? It, or not, yeah, I know. I heard that before. I know that scripture. I'm like, How would you like it if you're telling somebody some really good news, and they're like, yeah, great. Happy for you. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, man, they live with you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I have to, okay, okay, I have to tell on him just for a second. So he does this like happy crossword puzzle thingy, all right? And he times himself because everything's time management with him, all right? And uh, so anyway, every day he does this and he times himself. And I have to, when he's done and he gives the time, I can't say, oh, okay. Because then I have to keep hearing it. I don't think you heard me. I did it in like five minutes. <laughs> so now I have to, here's the response. Like, wow, you're amazing. <laughs> so why would we be any different with God when we hear the word of God? Because he really is amazing. He really is telling the truth. So we want to make sure that when God tells us something in his word, we're like, yeah, you're amazing, God. And I mean, not even putting a front on, because it's the truth. I mean, okay, that, it, it is amazing that he does it in five minutes or, or whatever the time is, you know. But he doesn't do that for me. I tell him things. We're working on the response. Years ago, we were on a mission trip, and he says it's just, I'm like, honey, can you put some excitement in it? And um, somebody came to him and said, oh, Pastor Scott, you know, I brought, a, I brought a video camera. And I was thinking we're doing, we were doing children, a children's outreach. And he's like, you know, I, I could take the video camera and, and videotape it. And Scott's like, oh, yeah, that, who knows? I wasn't there. But he said he said it excitingly. But anyway, he's, he's like, oh, yeah, that would be nice. Well, then... We get that, and we're like, oh, did you, you know, did you get the video of the kids? It was really great. They were so adorable and everything. He's like, yeah, no, I, I didn't take it. Pastor Scott just didn't seem really excited about it. And I'm like, honey, how did you answer him? He goes, I, act, I acted excited. I'm like, no, here's what you do. Pastor Scott, should I take the video? Yes, yes, take the video camera. <laughs> I'm like, then he knows you want him to take the video camera. But anyway, yeah. What's that? He should have went to me. I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't do that all the time. But anyway, I'm being a little exaggerated. Somewhat. <laughs> but I'm good. All right, I am focused right now. So, you know, this area, we, we, we're always faced with challenges, okay? And understanding every single day... I know you all are lovely, and you all are wonderful, and you're great, but when you leave this house, you're going to run into difficult people. <laughs> you're going to run into some challenging people that are going to build some love muscles in you, all right? And you're going to have this choice of what you're going to do when that challenge hits you. So, you know, understand, in this we're constantly being challenged to not react in the flesh, okay? To react with kind of a soft answer turns away wrath, all right? To respond with Christ-likeness. So, you know, this, if, we, if we're choosing this road, we're responding with Christ-likeness. And here's the thing here. The only way you know how Christ, 
how the Lord responds is through his word, okay? Responding the way God would want you, with the fruit of the Spirit, all right? With the kindness and the gentleness and the goodness of God, all right? Now, if you're faced with challenges and not you, but other people out there, <laughs> okay? Um, you're going to find that um, they like to use a lot of this, a lot of excuses. They like to do this a lot. They like to blame, put the blame on somebody else. Up here, we learn to take responsibility, even when it's not necessarily our fault. We take the responsibility to, okay, what do I need to do in this situation to make it right? You know, and if God tells you to do something, you do it. I can remember years ago, um, it was actually, a, the person was the secretary of the church we were going to, and something had happened, there was a misunderstanding, and I got a call at work and just got reamed out for no reason. It wasn't even me. So anyway, like, I'm, I'm like, I'm at work right now, I can't really talk to you, but they didn't care. They just kept going on. I mean, I hung up the phone. I was livid. I was so upset. I was so angry. I'm just like, okay, you have an issue? Call me at home, not at work. You know, this, you could cost me my job. And I'm just, blah, 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 you know, going on to myself, not to anybody else. And all of a sudden, the Lord spoke to me and he said, okay, here's what I want you to do. They're obviously having a bad day. I want you to send them flowers. I'm like, what? Lord, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, they need to send me flowers. They were mean. <laughs> and the Lord said, no, I want you to send them flowers. So I called my hubby, and I'm like, honey, I'm, I feel that I'm supposed to do it. He's like, yeah, fine, go ahead. So I did. And um, here's the funny part about it. Who did I do it unto? The Lord, okay? Because... I sent flowers, just sent, praying a blessing on your day, released it. I never got one thank you for it. I never got an apology. I took it out on you, wrong person. Nothing. Who did I do it unto? Who did I sow to? The Lord, okay? Because here's what this road does. It does the right thing. It does the... Uh, integrity and character is huge with God, okay? So we want to make sure that we're staying in the integrity, the attitude, and the character of God, that we're not going to places of blame and excuses and why they did and how they made me feel and I don't want to, you know? Did I really want to send that individual flowers? To be honest with you, I didn't. <laughs> But, you know, once I did it, once I obeyed, once I released, it was like a release in me. It was wonderful. And I'm just like, thank you, Lord. And then it didn't even matter what they did, whether they thanked me or not. It didn't matter because I did it unto the Lord, okay? And we want to make sure that, you know, whatever we're doing, we're doing it unto the Lord. And I want, you, I want to read from... Ephesians chapter 6, and starting with verse 6. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will doing service, as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he is a slave or free. Okay, so when we're doing things, I'm not expecting somebody that I do something for to repay me. You know, I am expecting my God to see and to provide, you know, because we understand that without faith, it is impossible to please God. But those who come to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. 
So when our hearts and our, the integrity of our hearts are doing the right thing, we're always planting seeds. And those seeds are going to come forth. The Word of God also tells us God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, he'll reap. I, do, I just want to plant good seed because that's what I want coming back in my life. And, you know, when I have moments where I choose to react, okay, I do a reaction. Oops instead of responding, then I'm just like, okay, Lord, I'm going to pray a crop failure for those ones. <laughs> you know, I repent. That was wrong, Lord. Okay, now get me on the right path. Get me on the right way to go. Amen? All right. So blame, despair, you know, self-absorbed. Um, and so many times I hear this about the Word of God from people. Well... I know I should be in the Word. I just don't have time. You know what I find interesting? I find really interesting that people make time for what they want to do. And we need to stay in consistency in the Word of God because the Word of God is not just meant to make you feel good. The Word of God is meant to challenge us to grow so that we can be world changers. We're here to transform and change the world with the love of Jesus. Amen? And that's not always going to be easy, and it's not always going to be popular, because it's a very narrow, it starts off in a very narrow place. And it's much easier to just be stuck in there. Okay? I don't feel like it. Oh, this is a good one. I don't want to. I just don't want to. Really? You don't want to obey God. Well, yes, I want to obey God. I just don't want to do that. Well, you know what? If the Word of God tells us that that's what we should be doing, then it doesn't matter what I want to or don't want to do. It matters what the Word of God tells me to do. Amen? Or how about this? It's hard. This is hard. It's hard. I was talking to somebody one time, and they were. It was, they were going through a pretty challenging uh, time, and uh, one of their children were uh, really being challenging, really rejecting them. I mean, it was, it was pretty seriously bad. But they kept, it's hard, it's hard, it's just so hard. I, everything I do, it's just hard. And I'm like, do you hear what you're saying? Is that helping it get any easier? And they just looked at me like I, was, uh, like I had three heads. I'm like, the more you talk about it being hard, the harder it's going to be until you decide, you know what? It, it may feel hard, but it's not about my feelings. It's about what you are telling me to do. And I'm accepted and I'm loved by you, God. So therefore, I will choose to sow out acceptance and love even into difficult people even into this child who just looks like they're completely rejecting me, okay? So, you know, we want to make sure we're people of integrity, we're people of character, we're not blaming everybody for where we are. Blame never gets you anywhere, okay? Ever. Well, if they would have just done this, well, if they would have done that, well, because they did that, well, my parents, you don't know, well, if my, if my parents would have been better, then if my parents would have given me this, if my... Get over your darling self. Take responsibility. Take responsibility. Be a person of integrity and character. You know, we were just talking, and this happened years ago, and I just actually found out about it. But we, we knew this, this family, this couple, and... We didn't realize this, but this family, here's what they would do. Saying they're Christians, saying they love God, but they would literally go into restaurants, order food, eat the food, and run out of the restaurant without paying. And justified it by saying, well, the food wasn't that good anyway. Well, if it wasn't that good, why'd you fill your belly with it? You know, that is not integrity. I have heard people have come to us, wrong people to come to, and, and say, oh, yeah, I got such a huge blessing today. Whenever I was in 
I'll just say Walmart. I was in Walmart, and the cashier, like, gave me the wrong change back, gave me $20 extra. Whoa, God's provision. It's just like, no. Walk back in the store and say, you know what? This is yours. This is not God's provision. That is not that is not how your God will provide for you by getting somebody else in trouble. Come on. I'm thinking, what kind of crazy thinking is that? Well, you know what? You're faced with a choice. And it might be easier to say, woohoo, I got ahead. I got over on somebody. That is never God's way. Okay? Never. In any area. So we need to make sure that, you know, we want to stay on the highway of holiness. You know, being set apart to God. Being set apart from the attitudes and the ways and the things of the world. We don't want to get into the blame game and, you know, reacting to things and making excuses how everything's okay that we do. No, it is about flowing in the presence of and holiness of Almighty God, okay? So, you know, in this, what happens is this road starts off broad, but it becomes very constricting, okay? And, and one of the things, you know, you, you start to get very lethargic. You get very slothful, okay? Well, it doesn't matter anyway. Nothing ever works out for me, okay? Then it just moves into... Uh, it can move into fear. This is a road that, you know, fear. Fear is binding. Fear silences. So we want to make sure, because we know that God has not given us a spirit of fear. So we know it's a spirit, not something that we're supposed to just give into and call it concern and call it, well, cautious. No, God doesn't use fear to direct us, okay? He speaks to our heart, usually with a yes or no. <laughs> and if we don't listen the first time, in his grace, he'll show us, he'll maybe get a little, send people our way, you know, those types of things, okay? Then self-pity. Never, ever have a pity party for yourself, okay? Never. Because who comes to a pity party? You and the devil. <laughs> because, you know, in, in Psalms 103, the Word of God tells us that the angels of God hearken to the voice of the Lord, hearken to the Word of God. That tells me that if I'm complaining, if I'm murmuring, if I'm blaming everybody else for my lot in life, or why things didn't work out, or what you're not doing for me, or what you should have done for me, guess what I am releasing? I'm releasing demonic activity in my life. And we're blood-bought, redeemed of the Lord people. Why would we want to be releasing the wrong thing? I don't know about you. I do not want to be releasing. And then it moves into dis despair. Oops. Yeah despair and agony on me, you know, moves into despair and depression and, you know, those types of things. So we need to make sure we recognize what we're choosing to walk in in any given situation because it's much, I don't know why, but it's much easier just to flow right into this type of thing. Is it only me? When you're faced with a challenge, the first thing sometimes we want to do is get into how nobody's helping me, nobody's there for me, um, blaming others, making excuses, well, you don't know, uh, instead of saying, wait a minute, I may not know exactly what to do, but I know my God knows what to do, and I just need to stay focused on Him. I know I feel like I cannot do this, but you know what? The Word of God tells me that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I know I may feel insignificant and like a nothing and like I can't do anything, but the Word of God tells me, let the weak say I am strong. See, in, at any given point, we can either go with our feelings in the flesh, okay, or we can go with faith and trust 
in Almighty God. It's so very, very important that we make the right choice. Amen? In every situation. And that's even dealing with difficult people. Okay? When we respond, I'm not saying you don't tell people the way, you know, some of the things, destructive behavior that they're walking in, but God is a really good defender. You stay on this road, it tells me that the ravenous beasts are not allowed on it. So you stay on this road, you don't have to defend yourself. God defends you. You get into this road, you start, you get sucked into defending yourself, and you've got, you're dealing with, with somebody that's walking and this stuff. Oh, I'm telling you, it is coming on you hard and heavy. Hard and heavy. Okay? And it's like, I, I say this all the time. I'm like, it is like, just take some jello and try to nail it to a wall. Because that's, that's what you're going to get a lesson in frustration is what's going to happen. But if you will just, okay, God, what do I need to say? Where do I need to take this? How do I need to deal with this? What do I need to release? And then when you release it, Trust God. And it may be, you know, it may be difficult. You know, like whenever I'm telling the person, that's not your money. Take that $20 back and give it to the cashier. They're going to get in trouble for it. This is not God's provision. I mean, they were not happy with me. But, I, you know, I talked to them about integrity and character. They didn't take it back. But you know what? I planted the right seed. Amen. And I release it to the Lord. And they'll, they'll have to be accountable for that. And that's sometimes what we have to learn to do. Amen? So, woo, we're, we're getting ready to party now, aren't we? Getting ready to just step into the fullness and the goodness of God and, and choose. Even though it's a narrow place, it may be a little more challenging, a little more difficult, we're going to grow more. We're going to mature more. Okay, so get ready. I think, I truly believe that God brings challenging people in our lives to make us grow. <laughs> because how do you build a muscle? Just by sitting around, not doing anything? Or do you have to have some resistance? Do you have to have some weights? All right, so if we want to grow, love muscle, he's probably going to send us some unlovable people. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. I think I'm, I'm like, Lord, I have dealt with a whole lot. I think my love muscle is big enough, but I'm sure it's not. He'll keep growing me. All right, let's stand to our feet. Heavenly Father, we just praise you so much. We thank you. Holy Spirit, I thank you that according to your word, you do lead and guide us in all truth. We ask for your help that every situation and every challenge and uh, difficulty that, that comes into our lives, that Holy Spirit you would lead us into the, the, the highway of holiness, the, the place of staying in your perfect will, the place of declaring your word, O oh God, that will, the only, you are the only one who can truly change hearts. So Lord, help us to stay there in that place and help us to stay on that road, Father God, releasing you in, into every situation, and into every circumstance. We give you praise and we thank you so much. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Well, God bless you. We love you all. And go have fun and go get them.